Hi, I'm Paul Seal from CodeShare.co.uk and today I just want to show you some of the new features with, with Umbrico and the version that I'm on is 761. Not everything came in the latest round of updates but I just wanted to catch up with some of the features on there and uh, show you how to use them and I think I think some of them are really cool and um, yeah I'm looking forward to showing you. So it's not all not just features sometimes it's just changes to the layout and the look so the new login page if you're on 761 um, and 760 you'll find uh, that you've got this new login page and you can actually uh, customize the uh, image behind this login page so say you've got a customer's website and you want to have their logo on it first thing I'll show you what to do is how you actually customize that so I've just installed 761 with the default um, starter kit uh, Fano I hope I'm saying it right and so now I'm just going to go into Umbrico settings file it's in the config folder and I'm just going to um, get it to so where it says login background image I'm going to change it from being this path to another path for one of the images that's in the media just for just to show you what you can do. So if we go into the trunk and go to media, I'm just going to get one of these images. So I'll just copy this path. So I need to know, I need to get back to the root of the website, media 1016. So this starts from the slash Umbrico folder. So I need to go back out of there and do slash and then do media slash 1016 slash file name dot jpg so you could do it maybe you might want it to be within the css images folder or anywhere uh, but for the for this demonstration here i'm just doing it to there so we're going to expect to see this image uh, behind the login screen so let's give it a refresh now so i've saved the config file refreshing the uh, login page and as you can see we've got it just faint it says code garden 2014 and that was the image that was in that folder there code garden 2014 so that's how you change that so that's a nice little feature nice and easy to uh, change it as well so let's log in and have a look um, what it looks like now so in umbraco now we've got a new theme I'm saying we, I've not had anything to do with the development of this. I'm just a user and a developer. Um, I use Umbracode to develop websites for other people. I really appreciate what the um, open source guys, the whole community have done to build Umbraco. I'm just showing you what they have done, not what I have done. So yeah, there's a new style now for 760. So it's got this purple and green. I quite like it, if I'm honest. Um, one of the things that I think came in around 7.5 is this redirect URL management. So let me just show you what this does. If we go into any of these pages, uh, say this one, so if I, uh, because this has been saved and published, it's got a link to document. This is another thing to note. The link to document has been moved to the top of the properties tab. So that's useful. So it's got this link to document. So if I click on that, we'll see that this page goes off to here. There's not any content in it. It's fine. I'm not bothered about that. But the demonstration here is if we go back to the content and then redirect URL management. We will see if I rename this. So let's rename learn something. So people might not realize the knock on effect of renaming a page in Umbrico. It actually affects the URL. So instead of it just being um, learn, it will actually be learn hyphen something. So I'll save and publish that. That's changed to learn something. And so that would mean that the learn page would break. But let's refresh this. And it's automatically been redirected to learn hyphen something. And that's thanks to this um, in the redirect URL management. And it's not only um, redirected learn it's also redirected the pages underneath it so it's really clever and say if this page has been published and google indexed it you really don't want to lose those pages um, 
or have a knock-on effect from Google if you don't have the redirects in place. So that's why this is really useful. And say if you've only if you're working in a development environment, you might want to turn off the URL tracker altogether. Or if it's created one or two that you don't want, you can actually just remove them. And that will take those off. So if I remove the learn something, now when I try to go to slash learn, I'll get the page not found. So yeah, it's really good. Um, that's a, a nice feature that I say came in around 7.5. So let's move on to some other features that I've noticed. Um, one of the ones that I, well, there's a whole section of features that I really like. And that is this um, new template editor. We've got the ability, well, it's just really good because you can now insert, say if you want to insert a, a value from a certain field onto your template, and maybe the, let's just go with the site title. I don't know if there is anything set in that. And let's say if there isn't a site title, then the fallback field that I want is perhaps the page name and this is a list of all the fields and it looks like they're using the indexes to see what what fields have been created so this is all the fields that you can select from within the site so I want to get the site title and if not I want to get the page name and I'm going to insert that and it automatically generates the code that I need in that template to be able to show that and it's a good example of how to do this yourself. So if you're learning on Brico and you don't know how to do these sort of things, this will actually teach you how you can do it. So I've not used Umbrico field much. I've got to be honest that um, that until recently that was quite new to me. I don't know how new that is. Maybe it's always been there. But um, I've, I've used like get property value or get value or things like that. So Umbrico field. Is pretty good and then with this alt field alias and then page name so let's have a look see what that does on the front end uh, this is what I like to do with these sorts of things just play you know learn about how you do these things so we'll give it a refresh on this learn something so it's it looks like it's taken the uh, page name because it didn't have the uh, site title on this on this content item so what else can we do so let's say I want to list all pages. Say if I'm on that uh, learn something page, I want to list the starter kit, basics, and masterclass. I want to list them out. How do I do that? Let me just stay on this page. So what we can do is we can use the query builder. And this is another good feature. So I want content of text page type from within this scope of learn something so from within learn something where and you can just you're building this query so I don't need to say where and I'll do order by name so this is going to return three items from underneath uh, learn something basics masterclass and the starter kit and it's going to create it's going to write the code for me that I need so I'm going to submit that and it's put it on the page for me. So it's used the Razor syntax. So if you're new to Razor, again, this is a good way to learn on how, how you use Razor within Umbrico. So we've got this bit here that to say, this is gonna be some code, this uh, at sign with the open curly brace. So it's gonna say, right, the selection is model.content.site, first child where the document type alias is landing page, where the children of our text page and where x so the there's a lambda expression here so basically where the page is visible and order by the name then it's going to loop through them and it's going to say for each of the items in here just render a link for each of them so i'm just going to save that i've not had to write any code or anything i've just used the query builder so if we go back to the learn something page give it a refresh so i've now got my learn something i've got basics masterclass and the starter kit and I'm really pleased with that because that's just so useful it I didn't know how to write the code I've just put that in the query builder now I've got the code written for me and they've even 
Donna for each loop for you to show you how you can loop through those items on there. Um, personally, I don't like to write any code on the views anymore. I try and keep that out of it, um, try and stay strict to just feeding in the model and the model contains all of the items that you're going to loop through already. It was already done on the server side, but you know, some projects it, it is fine to do that. It is fine to have it in the view if, um, if that's how you want to work, and I'm not saying it's a bad way, but it's really good. This is for learning. So maybe on the server side, you might want to use this uh, sort of syntax and it's showing you how to do this. So that's really good. I'm really impressed with that. Um, what else is in the query builder? So I don't think we need to look at any more at that query builder because I think you get the picture of it. Uh, so let's save that again and let's go on to the master template now what this has got is it's got this new thing called sections so if you are um, if you say if you've got some scripts that you want to um, be able to put scripts on pages lower down um, within the tree of pages that inherit um, templates that inherit from each other what we can do is we can define a section in here that is the scripts to render at the bottom. So after all the important scripts have rendered, we now want to render the other scripts. And we want to be able to dictate that from templates lower down. So we can do what we call a section, and this is an MVC convention anyway. But So if we want to uh, render a child template, so the contents of a child template, no, we don't want that. So render a name section, so this is what we want. So I, I want to say at this point, I want to render this section, which is, I'm going to call it scripts bottom. I'm going to insert that. Is it mandatory? I'm going to say no, because if it was mandatory, it mean all templates would have to enforce that rule. So the, you would all have to have a section that is called scripts bottom, whether you have anything in it or not. But I'm leaving that as non-mandatory. I'll click on insert. Now that all that did is it just said at render section, gave it a name and comma false. It's not done anything else. But if you didn't know how to do it or what the right what the words were to write, it's done it for you and it's quite useful. So let's just refresh on the page. Uh, you shouldn't see any difference. It still loads fine. But let's go to um, say on this text page template. We then want to use this section, so we will define the name section, and I will say scripts bottom. So this is a section where I want to use the one that was in the master template. So I'll click on insert. So I'm saying within this bit, I want you to render something in there. So I'll do script type equals text slash JavaScript. Okay, and then maybe I'll just do an alert. Hello. So I've got that rendering on there now. So if I refresh this page, we should see a hello. But if I do it on the home, if I go to the home page, we don't see that alert. So that's only been applied to the template which was for text page but you'll find that if I view page source on the text page so on learn something or the starter kit so they've got it as well because it's on that template if I view page source you'll see that that script only got added in underneath in the in the area where it was defined so that's another one of the uh, good features on this um, Let's just have a look, see if there's anything else. So I, th I believe they've got a new uh, forms um, version out. I've not really used that myself, not had a chance to. Um, but I think you'll agree, it's, it's some really good features, especially with this template section. So download Umbraco uh, version 7.6.1, or by the time you watch this video, they might have moved on to 7.6.2, etc. Um, yeah, and I think you'll enjoy it. Try it out, learn from how they're writing their queries using link and yeah, share it with others, tell people about it and um, I think you, you'll find it useful.
So anyway, if you like this video, please click on like. Um, feel free to leave in a comment, subscribe to my channel and share it with others. So thanks for watching. Bye.